Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror thriller films from 2003, titled High Tension. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie starts with an injured woman in a hospital, uttering, I won't let anyone come between us anymore. The scene then switches to a woman sprinting barefoot through the woods. Despite her numerous wounds, she reaches the road and grabs the attention of a passing driver, prompting him to stop his vehicle. Desperately tapping on his window, she pleads for assistance, and just then, she awakens, revealing the incident as a mere dream. The girl, Marie, is a college student, and she is with her bestie, Alex, they'll spend the weekend at Alex's family's house deep in the countryside. Marie then confides in Alex about her dream, recounting how she was injured and fleeing from someone, only to realize that her pursuer was none other than herself. As the friends enjoy the music-filled ride, we catch glimpses of Alex's mother and her younger brother, Tom, eagerly awaiting their arrival. During these joyful moments, we can see someone not too far from the house having a good time. But then, a crazy thing happens as the man coldly discards a girl's severed head from his truck, exposing a dark and sinister reality lurking in the area. As the sun sets, Alex suggests taking a shortcut on their way home. Strange occurrences begin when she insists on stopping the car after spotting someone in the fields. She steps out to investigate but doesn't return, leaving Marie increasingly concerned. Worried about her friend's safety, Marie enters the fields, and then not long after, she hears the car engine starting. To her relief, it turns out that Alex is alright, and was just playing a prank on her for fun. Shortly after, the friends arrive at Alex's house, where Marie is introduced to her family and shown around. Following a satisfying dinner, Alex excuses herself to freshen up in the bathroom, while Marie steps outside for a smoke. As she's sitting on a swing outside, we can see that she's a pervert. She sits there watching as Alex takes a shower, which makes us think that Marie might have more feelings for Alex than just as a friend. As the night deepens and everyone sleeps, we spot what appears to be the truck we saw earlier driving toward the property. After the man stops in front of the house, the doorbell rings, startling Marie and making her cautiously look out the window. Simultaneously, Alex's father investigates the disturbance, only to face a horrifying fate. He is attacked by an armed man, the very same man spotted throwing a woman's head from his truck earlier. While Marie is still in shock from what she has just witnessed, we see the killer breaking into the house and further torturing Alex's father. First, he drags him to the stairs, and sticks his head between the spindles. The killer then strikes a table into the father's head, causing it to separate from his body. While Alex remains asleep, the disturbance awakens her mother and brother. Sensing danger, her mother instructs Tom to return to his room while she cautiously heads downstairs to investigate. Here she discovers her husband's lifeless body on the stairs, just as the killer emerges, wielding a razor. Meanwhile, Marie can hear the woman's painful screams, yet she is paralyzed by fear and unable to offer assistance. Time is running out as the killer begins ascending the stairs, so Marie quickly restores the guest room to its original appearance, leaving no evidence of her presence. By removing any traces, she ensures that the killer won't suspect anyone beyond the family. The killer then enters the room, meticulously scanning every inch, but Marie's efforts ultimately prove successful. He departs without noticing that she is actually at the bottom end of the bed. Once he departs, Marie breathes a sigh of relief, unaware that her best friend is next in line to face his brutality. As the razor is pressed against her throat, Alex abruptly awakens to the chilling sight of the man telling her to keep quiet. Meanwhile, Marie decides to venture downstairs in search of working phones. While searching in the parents' room, she is interrupted by approaching footsteps, compelling her to hide in the cupboards. Suddenly, Alex's mother crawls into the room, and finds a phone to make a call. But before she can take any action, the killer enters and mercilessly slits her throat, resulting in her agonizing demise. Marie is so shaken up by the horrific events she witnesses that she is rendered speechless. After the killer departs, Marie emerges from the cupboard to sit beside Alex's mother, and the woman utters a single word in her final moments. Why? With those haunting words, she passes away. 
Marie attempts to call the police, but the phone is non-functional. With no other options available, Marie decides to seek Alex's help finding a working phone. As she enters the room, she discovers Alex chained to the bed with her mouth gagged. Marie is giving it her all to free Alex, but she is unable to unlock the chains. Suddenly, the piercing screams of Alex's younger brother Tom capture their attention. Peering out the window, they witness Tom running into the fields with the killer following him with a gun. Tragically, the next sound they hear is the crackling of a fire, indicating the killer's brutal act against Tom. With her family now gone, Alex is overcome with tears, but Marie remains a steadfast friend. She now has to locate the family's phones, but Alex is too shocked to provide any information, so she quickly makes her way to the kitchen, where she is confronted with the grim reality that the killer has already severed all the wires. But just as Marie is about to return to the room, she is horrified to discover that the killer has already abducted Alex. After placing her in his rusty truck, the man hurries back into the house to retrieve Alex's picture from the family portrait. As he busies himself inside, Marie quietly joins Alex in the truck. However, their escape plan is interrupted when the killer unexpectedly arrives outside. Marie remains vigilant, clutching a knife, prepared to defend against the man. Yet, the situation takes an unexpected turn when the killer unknowingly shuts and locks the truck door, unaware of Marie's presence. As the man drives the vehicle, Marie relentlessly attempts to free herself and her friend from captivity. Meanwhile, the killer adds Alex's photo to the rearview mirror alongside the pictures of his other victims, revealing that he has done this crime many times before. Back to Marie, she finally succeeds in unlocking the door. Soon, the vehicle stops at a gas station. While the killer is occupied refueling, Marie discreetly hands Alex a knife for protection, then slips out of the car to seek help from the gas station attendant. She manages to enter the shop, and quickly instructs the cashier, Jimmy, to call the police. However, as the killer approaches the shop, Marie is forced to find a hiding spot. Although uneasy with the man's presence, Jimmy maintains his composure to avoid arousing suspicion. Suddenly, he notices blood on the killer's hand, prompting him to reach for his gun. But before he can react, the man requests a drink. And as Jimmy goes to fetch the bottle, He is viciously attacked by the killer with an axe, meeting a gruesome fate. On the security camera, we see him approaching the store door, putting up a closed sign, and turning off all the lights. Witnessing the unfolding murder, Marie swiftly escapes from the store, and seeks refuge in the bathroom. However, it becomes apparent that the killer has become suspicious of her presence. It could be the reason why he killed Jimmy, as he might have learned that Jimmy was hiding someone from him. In the bathroom, the killer comes dangerously close to Marie's hiding spot, but fortunately, he fails to discover her. After using the restroom, he departs, giving Marie the opportunity to come out and quench her thirst. Just then, things go downhill when she hears the truck driving away. Driven by the determination to rescue her friend, she contacts the police from the gas station phone, though she struggles to provide them with a precise location. After recounting the events to the authorities, she finds Jimmy's car keys and revolver on the counter, takes his vehicle, and begins tailing the truck. As they enter the woods, Marie loses track of the vehicle, only to realize that the killer is now behind her. She attempts to use the revolver but is upset to find that the killer has already emptied its cylinder. Left with no choice, she accelerates the car, with the killer relentlessly pursuing her. Due to the darkness and the car's speed, Marie ends up getting into a crash. Luckily, she pulls through even though she's got a bunch of injuries. In a desperate attempt to hide from the killer, she swiftly departs from the scene, and seeks shelter in a nearby greenhouse. While tending to her wounds, she spots the killer approaching, his footsteps getting closer. She stays low to avoid him, and unexpectedly discovers a bundle of barbed wire. Acting quickly, she fashions a makeshift weapon by tightly wrapping the wire around a piece of wood. But before she can make a move, the man suddenly emerges from behind and viciously chokes her with a plastic bag. After knocking Marie to the ground, he attempts to cut her throat. But with all her strength, Marie seizes an object from the floor and strikes it against the killer's head. 
As blood flows from the man's wounds, Marie grabs her weapon and hits him repeatedly until he can no longer move. To confirm his demise, she approaches him, only to be shocked to find him still alive. He tries to strangle Marie, but she fights back using a plastic sheet, ultimately choking him to his death. Meanwhile, as the police reach the gas station, they discover Jimmy's lifeless body. The captain then stumbles upon some sick CCTV footage catching the crime that's gonna blow his mind. The footage reveals that Marie, rather than some eerie old man, was the one responsible for Jimmy's death. On the other hand, Marie retrieves the keys from the killer and frees Alex, who greets her with fear and anger. Holding the knife Marie had given her earlier, Alex warns her to stay away. Marie keeps telling her that the man is dead, but Alex seems to have no idea what she's talking about. As the movie flashes back, it's revealed that Marie was the one responsible for Alex's family's demise, there was no other man involved. Marie is either delusional or suffers from multiple personality disorders, shifting between different personas. Back to the present, to escape the danger, Alex slices Marie across the face and stabs Marie with the knife. Marie, once again transitioning into her alter ego, grabs an electric saw from her old truck, relentlessly pursuing Alex with the intent to kill her. Fortunately, Alex manages to seek assistance from a passerby, a man whom Marie had dreamt of seeking help from in the opening scene of the movie. Anyways, Alex desperately urges the man to start the car, warning him about the imminent danger. Unfortunately, luck is not on their side, as the car fails to start. Before they can escape, Marie catches up to them, wielding the electric saw to brutally kill the man. She then gets down and walks over to the side window, making fun of Alex's super freaked out screams. Using a metal rod, Alex shatters the windshield, and manages to escape the vehicle, but not without sustaining injuries from broken glass. Though free from confinement, she finds herself unable to run. The man, or rather Marie, closes in on Alex, repeatedly questioning if she loves her. Alex reluctantly confesses her love as she doesn't want to be split in two. This confession momentarily calms down Marie, and it is revealed that Marie loves Alex so much that she has to eliminate anyone who could come between them. All of a sudden, Alex retaliates and impales Marie's chest with the rod. Despite being stabbed, Marie proclaims she'll never let anyone come between them. The movie concludes by returning to its opening scene, where Marie repeats the phrase from the beginning of the movie, I won't let anyone come between us. We see her being restrained to her bed in the mental hospital. Peering through the one-way mirror, Alex gazes at Marie, but then, Marie looks directly at the mirror as if she knows Alex is watching her. Okay guys, that's all the recap of High Tension 2003. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.